is a guy, obviously, that throughout the offseason, a lot of us thought that he could be dealt for a player at another position with the thinking being that he's coming into his to the final year of his contract and uh, with a log jam at, at inside linebacker, he's a guy that you might lose uh, next off season if, if he doesn't get the kind of playing time that, that he could get elsewhere. So, you know, the, the prevalent thinking was that he could be gone, but it doesn't really look like that's going to happen. It looks like he's probably going to be on the roster this season, and they're going to have to find a way to get, you know, those three guys on the field. Now, Billy Davis noted today that all three of them could potentially get on the field actually at the same time. Uh, they'd have to do that probably in some sort of sub-package or a specialty package. But if you're just looking at how they utilize those guys in the basic 3-4, my best guess is that Kiko wouldn't come off the field at all. You'd have uh, D'Amico playing sort of the uh, the early downs, and then you'd have Kendricks coming in uh, in you know uh, passing situations because obviously he is a uh, more skilled uh, defender in terms of coverage. So, so there's a number of different ways that they can utilize those guys, but my best guess is that Kiko would get the majority of the snaps. Is there another spot in this defense that Kendricks can move to? Can he be an outside linebacker? Is he better than any of the guys on the outside? Can he compete at that spot if he's not a full-time guy, every down, three-down player in the inside? Well, he's, you know, 5'11", 6 foot, uh, 240. So he's not the kind of body that you want playing a traditional outside linebacker role. But like I mentioned, if you do have him in some sort of sub-package or, or specialty package, he is a guy that is a skilled pass rusher. If you look at his stats when he was in college at, at University of California, he actually had a number of, of – I forget exactly how many he had his senior year, but I think it was up around seven or eight sacks his, uh, his, his last year at, at, at Cal before he entered the, uh, the NFL. So he does have some uh, pass rush ability. Uh, you can kind of line those guys up and, and sort of that amoeba thing that the, uh, that the Jets used to do where you don't know who's coming and, and who isn't. Kiko Alonso is another guy that, that can – they can get after the passer a little bit too, and you have you know a lot of guys on, on the Eagles defense that, that really do a great job getting after the passer. And Vinny Carey and Brandon Graham and Connor Barwin had 14.5 sacks last year. Interesting stuff, Jimmy Kemsky here, and uh, obviously the battle for the third spot is that a battle at all? Does Tebow look like a guy with two years off that looks like he can be a factor in that race? This time last year, Mark Sanchez looked terrible. <laughs> So, and, you know, by the time training camp rolled around and, and he got going there and then all throughout the preseason games, he, he, he was impressive at the time. So it's way too early to kind of make any definitive statements on, on how, you know, quarterbacks look. And, and, and they're all trying to learn. You know, they got like some people trying to, trying to learn a new offense and, um, you know, learn the receivers. And, and um, I mean, it's just a lot on his plate. So it's, it's kind of – really premature to, to make any kind of statement on how well on how good he looked i will say that his delivery is a little slow i mean it looks i actually used to be a tebow specific writer back in my day and i wanted to blow my brains out <laughs> uh, that that was for uh a north jersey uh outlet but uh that uh uh so i mean i, I think his delivery is a little bit better than, than it used to be but he's a guy that um you know it isn't really you know your your natural drop back pocket passer type guy so he's not going to have the same kind of look as, as some of the other guys but again I think it's just way too early to, to, to kind of Matt Barkley said that you know he's not taking any reps away from, from him um, you know we'll see about that as, as training camp gets underway and progresses but you know, like I said it's just way too early to kind of make any definitive statements there. Yeah, I, and, and that's you know makes sense I, I'll guess the question and you mentioned Sanchez and Barkley Sanchez a lot of talk has been all right well he was here last year and he was coming off the surgery maybe that had some issues does he look like a stronger thrower this year and does Barkley look like he's at least made a step you know in the years past you've heard a lot about well he you know his arm is uh you know looks like a pop gun and just you know not very good does both of those guys look like they have improved uh Sanchez I think looked better from and again we didn't really see a ton of 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 them throwing um the first day specifically that, that we had access they were way down the other end of the field like they were like 70 yards away it was actually a side view you can't really get an idea of how accurate there are at all that day. And then yesterday it was a little bit of a better look, and now we were behind them, so you can kind of see routes progress and, and if they were more accurate. But I mean, just from the body of work that we've seen so far, again, there's really nothing that we can say in terms of how they look so far. I will say that, you know, Sanchez did kind of look a little bit better from the limited from the limited action that we, that we saw uh, yesterday but then he looked when he first started with the Eagles uh, last year. So, uh, I think, you know, maybe there's some encouragement there. The one thing I think Sanchez really does a great job of is 
his passes in the middle of the field, the seam routes specifically. You look at the numbers that you know guys like Zach Ertz and, and Jordan Matthews and, and even Brent Selleck had when, when Sanchez played last year as opposed to Nick Foles, and they were up. So I think he does a good job working in the middle of the field. The outside of the field, not so much. But he's a guy that, again, um, you know, struggled early in, in, in camp last year. And, and I think you know coming in this year and already knowing the offense, already knowing the players around him will help him enormously. Jimmy, uh, how about Nelson Aguilar, the uh, number one pick here? He, he missed the first set of the OTAs. He had that uh, the rookie thing, and now he's uh, you know he's back. And a lot of people looking at uh, him to replace Jeremy Macklin. What do you see from him? He can scoot. Yeah, he can, he can run. I, I, I had a chance. I didn't really see him. Um, I didn't really get a chance to look at him as a receiver running routes and catching passes. But the one area where I did get to get a, a close up look at him was returning kicks. And uh, first of all, when he when he just a little quick uh, fun fact about Nelson Aguilar is when he catches kick when he when he catches the kick return when when he when he starts to run he screams like literally screams as loud as he can as he starts to run so <laughs> that, was, that was kind of fun to watch but yeah he's got some giddy up when 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 he takes off with it he's got some he's definitely I mean, it's clear it's, it's clear that that he has some speed and uh, I think he can do some damage in the offense this year. Let's look at that secondary, Jimmy. I think it's probably the most interesting battle here. I think it's also interesting that a guy like Eric Rowe played safety for three years, moved to corner. Walter Thurman's played corner for seven years and moved to safety. <laughs> uh, is Thurman a guy who looks comfortable and, and looks like he fits that mold to be a corner who can move and play safety? Uh, again, I'll give my stock answer that we <laughs> we didn't really get to see too much, but I did have a chance to – uh, the, the one I asked uh, By- Byron Maxwell being being new to the team, and he was talking up the players that 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 are around him. And I asked, you know, what are there any players that that have stood out so far uh, in the time that he's been here? And he said Walter Thurman he was, he was the guy that he singled out. Now, of course, those two guys played together in Seattle, so they could just be boys. And he's got a Seahawk bias going there. But he did say that Thurman did get his hand on a, his, his hands on a lot of passes. He's been batting balls down, so that's encouraging, I guess. Um, like you said, he's, he's been the corner his entire career. Now there's a thinking that once you learn the slot position uh, on, on defense as, as a corner, then you're kind of set up to, to know all the other positions just as well because you're going to have to know what's going on around you to the outside and, and, and also behind you. So the, in, in terms of learning the slot position, that puts you in a position to, to know all the other positions just as well. Now he's a guy that will – you know he will stick his nose in there and tackle, so I don't think that's a problem for him in terms of playing safety. Uh, the Eagles like those kinds of players that 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 were obviously Malcolm Jenkins was drafted out of Ohio State was the 14th overall pick, I believe, uh, as a corner. He played corner first couple years in the league, didn't really make it there. Moved to safety, and he's made a career of it there. So I mean, they, they like those guys that can drop down. They, they like they like their safety to be able to drop down and and stay in their their base three four defense so that they can, you know, kind of be equipped to stop the run. But then also, you know, they, they want their, their safety to be able to cover slot guys man-to-man and play, you know, kind of play single high deep um, coverage uh, and w- when they want to give those looks as well. So I think he's a guy that, that, that can certainly do those two things and, you know, could could, could potentially be a good fit for the defense. Uh, Jimmy Kemsky is with us, phillyvoice.com, covering the Eagles. All right, then, Roe versus Carroll. Is it that look like that's going to be the training camp battle to watch? Yeah, it could be. Um, Rowe, I think they'd love to go out. I think they'd love to see him go out and, and win that job. And I think that's the right move, by the way, um, trying to put him at corner. I think corner, you know, what, safety, of course, in, in the NFL is just, just a horrid, horrid position. In fact, the Eagles, I just did a, a post on my kind of rank, uh, the, the, the NFC East by position. I don't even know who the Eagles' safety is going to be this year, and there's an argument to be made that they have the best safety situation in the division. And they're really just – Goes to show like how bad safety play is, not just in the NFC East and, and not just with the Eagles over the last half decade, but league wide safety is a terrible position. So I can understand the logic where people might be tempted to say, "Well, Eric Rose should play safety because then you know you have a, a guy at a position that is not good league wide where you can tend to where you can potentially be good." But for me, I think cornerback is still a far more important position. So I think you give him a chance to play there and play well, and if he can't, then like Malcolm Jenkins, you can move him from from cornerback to safety. But, yeah, early in early in uh, OTAs here, it looks like it'll be Rowe and and, uh, and and Nolan Carroll. And, and Brandon Boykin, has, you know, they, they, they've said that he'll get out of jets when a spot on the outside. I don't know if I buy that or not. And Brandon Boykin's kind of tired of, of answering questions about that himself. So, um, yeah, but, but but I would guess that, that the two big contenders there to, to be on the outside opposite Byron Maxwell would be Rowe and Carroll. Uh, Jimmy, you know, and obviously they got those guys in the sixth round, 
Do either of those guys have a shot to either be a corner or in the mix or move over to play safety, or are they just kind of, you know, guys that are filling some uh, time right now? Yeah, I think those are guys that they'd like to develop. Uh, Ja'Cory Shepard is the, the, the guy of, the, of those two that is a little bit more intriguing to me. He was actually following uh, Brandon Boykin around yesterday. At, like, I don't know if you've ever been, you know, been to a restaurant where the, the the waiter or waitress has like, you know, the new employee sort of following them around, where they're like, you know, I'm I'm Mike, I'm your server for the day. This is uh, this is this is Christy. She's new here. She'll be following me around. That's kind of like the situation what was going on with Brandon Boykin and Jacory Shepard yesterday, where Shepard just basically followed Boykin around wherever he went during certain uh, drills and 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 um, during certain like uh, uh, positional drills and and uh, teaching sessions. So uh, he's it looks like he's sort of going to be an, an understudy to, to Brandon Boykin there, and and, he, and he's learning the slot position. Or again, like I mentioned earlier, you learn the slot position. You have a good idea of what's going on, what's going on on the outside and at safety. And the Eagles have really brought in a number of guys that that can do both those things. And that they can, you know, play outside. They can play slot. They can play safety. And you know, EJ Biggers is another example of that. The two guys that they drafted in the sixth round, uh, and then like we mentioned already, Thurman and Rowe. And they just like that kind of versatility. So yeah, I, th- I think those guys kind of fit that mold. But again, like I said, they're probably more developmental types at this point. Hey, is the offensive line an issue in terms of we know? Well, I guess with Mathis not being there, what does the line potentially look like if he's not there? And even if he is there. Is this a situation where they did not address something that was probably a need in, in going through draft or bringing in a free agent for some competition? It seems that that line is a little thin in depth. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I've written extensively about uh, about the, the, the problems at offensive line, and actually people are kind of sick of he- are kind of sick of hearing about it from me. But yeah, I think it's a major issue, long term more than it is short term. You look short term. I think they're set up to be uh, to be a good offensive line again. They have uh, at a minimum three starters returning in, in Jason Peters, Jason Kelsey, and Lane Johnson, all of whom are very good players. And then, of course, the big question mark will be Evan Mathis. The interesting thing that came out of the first day of OTAs was that they had Alan Barbary playing left guard and Matt Tobin playing right guard. And why that's interesting is because you think that if they were sure that Evan Mathis was coming back. Barbary would just stick at right guard because that's where he's going to be playing when the season begins. So for him to move over to left guard, I don't know if that says anything in terms of, you know, Mathis might not be coming back and they're just putting him at left guard and they're putting Matt Tobin at, at, at right guard, or if it's just a matter of uh, uh, they just they, um, uh, they they just want Tobin to be, to, to be ready or, or whatever the case may be. But certainly it was interesting that they moved Barbary from his spot where you think that he, or, or, if they, or rather if they think Tobin is uh is, is better than, or if they think that Tobin is, is the guy that they want to have at right guard and, and sort of Barbie be the, the guy that can fill in at any position, whether that be right tackle, left tackle, uh, uh, right guard, or left guard. But it certainly was interesting that they that they moved him from you know right guard over to the to the left side. I don't know if that says anything, but yeah, I, in terms of their depth, if Mathis isn't around, you know you're losing you're, you're losing either Tobin or, or, or Barbary uh, as as you know your top backup, and then your top backup then becomes a guy like Andrew Gardner. So I think they're in big trouble. If they lose somebody during the season, if they if they if they do something with Mathis, whether they trade him or cut him or whatever that may be, and in long term, they have the oldest offensive line in the NFL. I mean, Evan Mathis is the oldest starting projected offensive line in the NFL. Jason Peters is third. Uh, Alan Barber is up over thirty. I think he was like the seventeenth oldest start projected starting offensive lineman in the NFL. So it's going to be really hard for the Eagles to replace three aging, potentially declining starters all at once. Uh, you saw that happen with the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they, their their offensive line is very good now because they spend a lot of number one picks on it. But for a long time, they kind of wasted the primes of, of guys like Tony Romo and Demarcus Ware and Jay Ratliff and and some others on that team because their offensive line stunk. And you, you kind of saw that a little bit with the Giants as well. So that's a big problem area long term for the Eagles if they don't start bringing guys in. Jimmy Kemsky is with us. The OTAs continue tomorrow. You mentioned we talked about Kendricks. Is Kiko Alonso? He's fully healthy, ready, and he he's out there doing everything right now, right? Yeah, he's doing everything right now. It's been a while since, since you know his injury. He um, he uh, he got injured. It, I, I believe it was like right around this time last year. So he's you know about twelve months into his recovery. So yeah, he's been doing everything, and then he's been fine. And Demi Ryan has uh, been out there on the field as well. So 
you know, those, those two guys uh, look like they'll, they'll probably be ready to go. Uh, you know, for uh, they you know certainly look like they'll, they'll be uh, playing when the season begins, uh, week one this year. All right, uh, he's Jimmy Kemsky. The Eagles continue tomorrow, then uh, they'll back on the eighth in a couple of days next week, and of course the mini camps, the sixteenth to the eighteenth, and then. The NFL training camps will open, and we'll get those dates for you coming up. Uh, Jimmy Kemsky over at phillyvoice.com. And, uh, Jimmy, it's always a pleasure, my man. We'll talk to you soon. Likewise, Mike.